Hello there guys, my name is Jay or DA and welcome back to another episode of the Space Engineer Spotlights. Damn, it has been a while. So today we're looking at something that may be considered a little bit oversaturated on the workshop and it is of course the D78C TC Pelican from the Halo franchise. Now, yes this may be a ship that's been overdone on the workshop a little bit like Star Trek ships and the whatnot but this is a very good iteration of it and the best part about it is the guy who actually produced this called Fedeza this is actually his first workshop upload which may I say is a first workshop upload is a damn good one the size the shape the scale is just there and I like it a lot there's a lot of features on it as well so it's not really a boring ship to fly there are a lot of features that you do see in the Halo franchise that it does and it does them very well. Now, bearing in mind this ship relies on uh, sort of rotors and pistons quite heavily and uh, in this build of Space Engineers, rotors and pistons work well now. They don't actually break or explode or anything like that. So if we do have any discrepancies with that, that will be a glitch through Space Engineers or have obviously pushed the ship to its limits. But from what I've been testing and flying it around, it, it seems okay. I haven't tested out its capabilities of flying in an atmospheric environment, only space at the moment, so we will test the atmospheric in a little bit. I personally don't think it's going to do too well because ion thrusters don't react too well in a sort of oxygenated environment, whereas it only has really a, a small amount of hydrogen thrusters, which is a little bit of a worry. I'm scared that this thing will not have enough thrust to stop and then crash sort of heavily into the earth which isn't great so let's have a gander so from above you can see that we do have these two wing sections at the front as well as two at the back those actually rotate in tandem which allows you to redirect your thrust to maybe pull forwards a bit quicker or you know when you're dropping down you can sort of control your descent a bit better and have a bit more control over it overall. And then we have this lovely back section which does house a lifting crane of sorts which allows you to pick up your scorpion tank or your uh, warthog, which is brilliant. I almost forgot that. And uh, yeah, we also have a connector on which is of course a space engineer's sort of essential. Um, without this we can't really fuel it and we can't really give it sort of the cargo it needs, which again is very, very important. So, uh, yeah, there's not a lot else to talk about, really, besides the landing gear and the doors. The way rotors have been applied to this is brilliant. I like it a lot. Um, we have the this uh, sort of hinged rotary conveyor here, which allows us to rotate the, the, sort of the, the uh, landing gear here and allow us to land on the surface. The back section has these two sort of frog legs, as I'm calling them, that sort of stick out on the back and allow you to sort of again land on a surface those all come down together and uh, sort of make you happy when you see they all work and don't explode we then have this nice wondrous bit of work with this door whereas if I press this button you'll see that it closes up very very nicely and very tidily look at that it's beautiful isn't it I love it I like it a lot it's just beautiful how, how he's managed to get to, to, to do it you know it, it might be very simple I'm not very good with rotors I always tend to blow them up but that is beautiful the way it works and it's worked very well because this is the same ship that I brought in uh, into this world so this ship I've flown around I've tested tried to destroy it it hasn't and you know it's doing pretty well so let's hope that you know it, it keeps doing pretty well now inside we have space for 10 people and then two pilots we have a pilot and a co-pilot and we have cargo, can, cargo storage above them so they can grab their guns, anything else they need out of there. We have this lovely red lighting, which for any of you that don't know, red lighting is used in the military or was used to be used in the military as uh, it didn't affect upon your night vision as well as it was, uh, it was better because the enemy couldn't see you as far away, which was brilliant. They actually tend to use blue lights now because uh, medics have issues when they have um, people like casualties within these and they couldn't see blood that well, so they're, they're now actually trying to adopt a blue light, which is uh, really interesting, just, just in case you didn't know and you wanted to know the boring facts. Now, he did, he did actually point out on his workshop page that he does have a backup reactor on here, which is only a small reactor, but that is just in case any of the systems were to go down and you needed that extra oomph. Which is quite nice, because what if you lost a wing, or what if you lost an area where it housed your reactors? What if? It's all what ifs, and it's all vitally important. We do have the two seats. I'm not really sure which one's which at the moment. I actually think this one is more of a co-pilot seat, as it's sort of higher up. I have just clipped out of the ship, which is something Space Engineers should have fixed, but uh, 
that that hasn't been fixed. And uh, yeah, if we jump into the actual seat, we have um, a lot of controls. We have four tiers of controls. We have like your general sort of um, lights and all that other gubbins and your beacon. We then also have your sort of seat. So we can turn the pilot seat control thrusters on and off on here. We also have the hatch timer to close that. We have the landing gears, the loading bay lights, and the camera for the loading bay. And then we also again have an SOS beacon, which is good. He's sort of the backups here, which is great. Um, we still have the SOS beacon on every tab. I actually used to do this on some of the ships that I did, like the uh, the Xenon and stuff like that. I used to put the SOS beacon on every tab because if you think you need to have it in any tab just in case anything happens and you don't have to scroll through every last little one to get to that point. We then have a lot of other controls. We have our moving thrust, which of course are our iron thrusters. We have our nacelle timers, which uh, if we hit this, um, oh, not that, if we hit number three, as you can see, they all rotate, which gives us better thrust, which I really do like. It does actually have a, a sizable impact on the maneuverability of this ship, which you'll see when I sort of try and fly it down onto the planet in a second. We'll bring that back to normal at the moment. Um, we then also have control over our uh, sort of uh, hydrogen thrusters here, so we can turn them off if we don't want to use them, if we're just flying through space. We have control of our sort of oxygen, so we can draw in oxygen if we are on a, an oxygenated planet, so we can pull all the oxygen in and sort of recharge bottles and whatever else before we fly out. We have a lot of other controls as well and so the more importantly we have a, the attachment point at the back which this is again another moving part and I'll show you that. So if I press this uh, it should it should come down he says. Um, it doesn't seem to work anymore that is weird. There we go so there we go, so it does extend to quite a nice point and uh, yeah I'm not sure why it didn't work the first time around, weird. When we press it again it retracts, all goes up into a nice neat little bundle and sort of stays in one place which is brilliant. And I actually think it turned off the landing gears there so you can't physically lock yourself on by accident to the outer framework. That's great, I like that because look I'm trying to hit lock, unlock and lock here but it doesn't actually allow me to because those are turned off. So it actually turns them on when you need to use them. Brilliant thinking my friend. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, do we, did we have some gyroscope control then? Okay, we actually have additional gyroscope controls here. So we, Okay, so we actually is a bit nippier than I thought. I never noticed that. There we go. So we have a lot more control. So let us bring the bay in and we will fly down to this planet down here sort of very ominously and uh, hopefully not die. I would not like to die in this. So let's go. Now as you can see the speed is it's generating fairly fast but that is probably with the addition of the gravity pulling us in quite nicely. Uh, of course gravity does have a big impact on your speed so uh, yeah if we just bring it down. I'm thinking just past this mountain range here We'll bring it down and sort of drop it down on some sort of plane there, maybe. Um, if we just turn our inertia dampers back on so we slow down a little bit and stop descending too quickly. But uh, if I actually use the nasal control, if I hit number three, we'll ha actually have a, a rather impactful change in sort of maneuverability here. So if I slow down a little bit and try and gain control of these, I will slow down. There we go. So as you can see, I do actually have um, strange controls, but it does help me control my descent which is quite cool and uh, I'm loading into the planet there so there's a bit of a lag spike with the uh, sort of the different atmosphere but as you can see we, it does it does have a bit of an impact and it does impact quite a lot on the general control of the ship as you can see we're not slowing down too well here so I'm just going to bring those back up and uh, make sure we don't crash because again I really would not like to crash in this thing because it's like a giant coffin all right, we'll slow down a bit now, which I found is best to do sort of rotating and pivoting and using where you have most thrust. There we go. So we've sort of come to a nice sort of point now. We are about 30 meters a second and slowing down. Again, the hydrogen and the ion thrusters, the, the, there needs to be more hydrogen thrusters basically because this thing doesn't slow down a lot at all. As you can see, we are still sort of moving around. Um, I have to spin it to really gain any proper control which does get dizzying for you guys there we go so we shall just get into a bit of a descent now hopefully stop at a, a nice point 
And I've just noticed the uh oh 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 I've actually just noticed that the um the connector is actually off center which slightly bugs me <laughs> if that's bad it really does bug me actually that that that's ooh I'm not going to mark it down because that that is that that's just unfair but yeah it's off center if if you guys hate a ship that doesn't really match up then eat your heart out it is actually moving a little bit unnecessarily with the rotated parts which is just a general space engineers issue um, but we are slowing down gradually. Now let's put our feet down, shall we? Get these bad boys down, which you guys haven't seen yet. And look, how cool is that? Let's let's drop her down. Get her down into a nice descent. Now I believe there is a camera underneath us. That one's not that. Eight. That one's up above. Five. No, so we don't actually have a camera. It would be nice to have a camera. If there is, I'm sorry I haven't found it, but it would be nice to have a proper camera for the underside. Let's have a look. No, there isn't a camera. Maybe a camera on the underside to, to gauge how far you are from actually landing this thing, because it's a bit difficult to do from the cockpit, I'll be honest. And uh, we have touch down. There we go. And then this stands at a nice point. You open up your back door. No pun intended there. That would sound a bit creepy. And then you can just walk off and on it. And look at that. It's it's beautifully gorgeous and very elegant in how it does things. It was a bit farty to get landed because of uh, just, again, the it's, it's space engineers. We'll just blame space engineers for that because it is space engineers' issue. So, uh, yeah, that is basically it. That is really all the features I could show you. It does land and uh, it, it does do what it says in the tin. Be a bit sort of slow to react to different to this environment. Again, it's a little bit drifty and I'd like a bit more control. But aesthetically, 10 out of 10, absolutely gorgeous. You got it right, I, I think. Um, the features that you've got in here are, are really cool. I like it. It's very, you know, Pelican esque and it's, it's great to use. I like it. It works. So. Well done, Fideza. Thank you guys for watching this. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys later. Peace!